So let's talk about the casualties. When the battle was over and the Union had fallen back to the other side of the Rappahannock where they would remain until the Chancellorsville campaign with a few movements here and there, but for the most part they stayed on the other side of the Rappahannock River. At the end of the battle there were nearly 13,000 killed, wounded, and missing for the Union Army. Somewhere around 5,000 for the Confederates. The vast majority of those Confederate casualties coming on the right under Jackson's command. Very few here on Marie's Heights. The majority of those Union soldiers are buried here on top of Marie's Heights from wherever they fell on the battlefield. And very few of them are known, unfortunately. I want to highlight just a couple of soldiers that I found. I, I chose them at random, but I feel like we need to make this a little personal because these are not just stones in a cemetery. These are human lives. And then, of course, there are the Confederates as well. We're going to take a look at their graves as well. These are lives. These are families. These are fathers, husbands, brothers, sons. These are families whose lives were devastated and never the same. One of the tragedies of the National Cemetery here in Fredericksburg, which contains dead not only from Fredericksburg, but from the other battles that were fought here in this area, including Chancellorsville, Spotsylvania, the wilderness. One of the tragedies is that of the over 15,000 men that are buried here, only 3,000 are known. There's a reason for that. You see, if you go to a place like the Antietam National Battlefield, there are relatively few unknowns compared to some of the other battles. But you have to remember that on this battlefield, the majority of the Union dead were left behind in places that were then held by the Confederate Army for at least a year or so afterwards. Which means there was no opportunity for comrades to come and identify their friends on the field so that when they were buried, they would have a name to go with the, the grave.
We're now in the city of Fredericksburg and this is a private cemetery, but it's also the national cemetery for the Confederate graves. It's one of the few places on a Civil War battlefield where you can not only find Confederate graves at the battlefield, but they all mostly have names as well. And that goes back to what I said about the Union soldiers, which is this is a, a place where the Confederates occupied for many months afterwards. And so they had ample time to identify and bury their dead and mark their graves with names. So that's what you're gonna see here. Also in this cemetery are six Confederate generals, though only one of them actually fell in battle. And that was Abner Perrin who was killed at the Battle of Spotsylvania. So we'll try to locate some of those, but they may not be with the rest of the Confederate soldiers. This wall was made from the bricks of destroyed houses from the Battle of Fredericksburg. The Confederate Cemetery was dedicated in 1870. And like the Union Cemetery, it contains dead from the four surrounding battlefields, Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, the Wilderness, and Spotsylvania. Here's Dabney Maury, who's one of the Confederate generals that are buried here. Abner Perrin, Brigadier General, killed at Spotsylvania on May 12, 1864.
As I often do, I like to just give some closing thoughts on my visit to battlefields or any historic location. And my, my thoughts are this, and I've expressed a lot of them already. This is a, a solemn place. It's a historic place. Uh, it's a place that those of us who are students of history, and in particular the American Civil War, have heard something about. If you're looking for a battlefield that looks like it did at the time of the battle, this is not the place to go. Even the parts that are untouched by uh, the growth of the town of Fredericksburg don't look like they did. Uh, the trees that have overgrown Lee's position, for example. But if you want to understand history, I highly recommend that you visit. It's definitely well worth your time. Take some time to learn about the battle before you come. Watch those scenes from Gods and Generals because I think they give you a better idea of what happened on Maurice Heights than what you can get by coming to the battlefield just because of how much it's changed. But it's, it's worth taking some time. And as always, it's important for us to learn from our history so that we don't repeat it. Thanks for watching.